how do you get motivation to start pre-season or just training in general? So great question. Typically, if you have had a good break uh, and you're out of routine, which I do recommend in off-season for at least two to four weeks, depending on how long your season um, went for, um, but minimum of one to two weeks where you have no structured training and then typically a two-week build-up before you start really getting into training uh, and following a structured plan is my approach. And, uh, and generally speaking, that's the general approach in the AFL. Uh, and the key with that is you, you can't just create motivation. I think motivation is a byproduct of um, sticking to your routine, uh, being disciplined, and then uh, starting to see um, progress from that discipline and from that routine. And then ultimately your motivation for that task uh, will come naturally. It'll be a byproduct of those two things. Funnel periodization. So if, you, if anyone that doesn't know what a funnel is, just Google it. But essentially it's an image. It starts with a, a, a high top where you can pour in um, your whatever your uh, product is that you're trying to filter down into. Let's say you're trying to put some um, powder, you're trying to mix powders together uh, or you're trying to mix a, a meal and you're making a recipe and you want to um, be precise, the funnel will start big at the st and then it will go down into a smaller um, little piece at the bottom so you can accurately um, precisely put in the content on the other end. That visual, that funnel where it's big at the top and small at the bottom is how I like to look at uh, periodization for Australian rules football. Uh, I was first exposed to this periodization model from Andrew Russell, who's been a high performance manager of the AFL for a long time, uh, and I believe it's a it's a common periodization approach in in athletics. Goals of preseason, well, from a fitness point of view, um, I brought, I like to break it down into work on your aerobic work, so how well um, you can move and um, and provide the body from that training uh, at uh, high intensity pace, uh, sorry, at low intensity pace. And conversely, when our anaerobic work, where we're relying on more our lactate, our energy system, and glycolytic energy system to be able to um, go at above aerobic paces. So those stores will allow you to um, work at high intensity. Um, so making sure you're working on both those qualities. Uh, and for the goals of pre season, is ultimately to peak um, that those those qualities as you get closer to the um the first like around march when you're starting games example of my favorite workouts for this one i'm going to um, label them in the show notes so listen to this podcast uh, and in the show notes there'll be a link and that will go straight to a website blog post where i've listed my favorite workouts both for improving your critical speed your aerobic speed that's uh, sorry, your aerobic capacity your uh, anaerobic both short intervals longer intervals uh, and uh, and repeat speed. So for those five key areas, which are the five key areas of Australian rules football, um, make sure to head to the show notes, which is the description section of Spotify and iTunes. If you can't find a link, just direct message me on wherever you're listening to this on social media or on YouTube, and I'll send you a link directly that will um, show you my favorite workouts to get develop those qualities. And then injury mitigation, I like to think of the 80-20 rule. So um, there's alarm bells when an athlete comes back from off season and they look out of really out of shape. Uh, that you, you, you're starting to hear things that you haven't that, that they haven't um, worn their football boots, they haven't kicked the football, they haven't done they, all they've done is just straight line trial runs. They haven't been in the gym, or maybe they've been in the gym but they've only done upper body beach weights. Um, so they are not prepared for the football pre Christmas block. Same for when you have your Christmas break, two to three weeks away from your training, from your football club. Um, we don't want to make that mistake. You want to make sure that you, you're catching up with mates, you're doing football drills, in even if it's in a group of four, uh, where you're kicking, you're changing direction, you're jumping up for the mark, um, you're doing small handball games where you're working on that axel decel reactive work, you're doing sprints, uh, you're keeping your kicking loads up. All these things are really important to prevent injuries such as hamstrings, particularly sprinting at about 